Hello, welcome to Calls with Your Kinky Bestie. I'm Emma. I am a submissive and mentor for fellow kinksters. This podcast is all about insights into kinky life and dating, um, sharing my personal experience and stories, and helps share mindset shifts too to get you into a confident space, um, more confident than you are now. So get ready. It all starts now. so glad you're here. Thank you for listening in. I'm trying something slightly different this week where I'm going to do a mini blurb on a kiki thing and a mini blurb on an ADHD thing to kind of bring the two together because sometimes I struggle to make one topic continuously about both of these things in the same episode. So let's just try this out. Um, The first thing which I'm so excited about is sharing an ADHD hack or just like an impulsive person hack. I really struggle with planning and oh my gosh, self-reflection is so important. I took uh, like a brand new to me, um, one of those like online quiz personality things recently. It's called Insights. It's a, like a bit more in depth than like Myers Briggs or things like that. It's less, um, you know, one or the other, and much more, you know, acknowledging that people are on a spectrum and ca- are capable of doing different things at different times, which I thought was really, you know, insightful. And I was excited uh, to hear the perspective from that. But yeah, one of the things that came up for me in that quiz was that, you know, I often find myself in emergency situations like that are just recurring because instead of setting up a plan to just prevent the emergency I just deal with the emergency when it happens and then deal with emergency whenever it happens again because I don't put the plan into promotion so I've been working on that and I've come up with like a fun hack for it and it's almost like a little little game with myself. So what I'm doing now is whenever I find myself in one of those like repeated crisis situations of like, okay, this could be prevented by planning, I give myself two choices. I can either put the system into place now or take the action to do the thing now. Or I have to schedule a time for me to do it later. Um, Like, so I either have to do the thing uh, that is like a insightful, like thinking ahead planning action, or yeah, like put a date on the calendar uh, to take that step later. And, okay, I'll give, I'll give a silly little example. Um, <laughs> so in my washer dryer, I've just been collecting little lint piles on top of my dryer for I don't know how long. I just have random, you know, piles of shit that I pull out of my pockets before I throw my clothes in the wash and you know the mountains of lint that come out of my lovely linen sheets and yeah they're just these piles are in different places they're just kind of like little bundles of trash and every time I go to do my laundry I see this trash everywhere and think oh my god I just need to get a trash can here but today I gave myself the choice of like okay I can deal with it now or I can set a date to deal with it where I'm going to do it then. And what I'm noticing is the more I do this, the more I'm just deciding to just like do it now. Like it, if, especially when a lot of these situations I'm finding myself in, like it's really a small fix or like a really small action that like set, sets things kind of right. Um, and the small action I could take might not be like the permanent end all be all solution, but it's a step. It's something that I'm trying. So when I 
you know, made myself decide that I went, oh, you know what? I have a plastic bag down here. Let me just collect all the lint together and all the trash together in this plastic bag and set this plastic bag up somewhere as a trash can. So at least I can put all my trash in the same place together. So yeah, that was a way that I was able to just like do it right then, right, right there, right then, like just in the moment. Um, and as an impulsive person, I really like that one of the options is to like, oh, just do it now. Because sometimes I just get to that state of like, oh, I'm so fresh. I just want to deal with this now and get it over with. So that was really cool. Um, but then like, okay, so the alternative where I could have set, you know, like made a plan to deal with it, there are a few different things I could have done. So, okay, so making the plan could have been like I could have right then and there pulled up, you know, an app on my phone and purchased a trash can to come to me later. Um, or I could have created a task in my Google Calendar, like a phone reminder to remind me a week from now to put a trash can down there. Or yeah, I could have put it on, put a trash can on a shopping list that I know I'm going to use next time I'm there. So I guess there's, you know, an extra little step of this of like, okay, if you're, if one of the, the things I'm allowed to do is to create a plan for later, but because I have to create this plan in the moment, um, I have to make it really easy for myself to plan. So like a paper, paper planner, I don't have a, a paper planner with me every second of the day. So that's going to work, not going to work for me to impulsively like put a plan into place. Um, but my phone using my, my phone calendar, it's really easy to just pop that on there. Um, I even have those Google home devices. So yeah, I can just tell my house like, Oh, Hey, will you create a, a reminder for tomorrow morning to tell me to do this thing? And yeah. Um, so it's still very, like I still have a very low effort opt out because, you know, there's no, no hustle culture here. Like I'm not just going to make myself deal with the system every single time something comes up, but I'm going to work my impulsivity to my advantage and like that motivation to just like deal with things right away and just like these sudden bursts of energy. Like I'm going to utilize that by either making myself create a system so the problem is solved or yeah, setting a, a plan into place so that it can be solved and not just, yeah, having to deal with the same crap all the time. So that's been really, really exciting. And I've been thinking about, you know, like how many different ways you could use this in your life. Like maybe one of your recurring, like think about the recurring crises, crises that you are facing in your life now. Like I have a few, you know, friends who are currently in the dating boat and they keep running into, you know, these same types of situations uh, in dating where like, you know, oh my gosh, they're getting stood up. Or, you know, after a few dates, like this one behavior happens with a guy. And like, what if the next time something shitty happened that's happened to you five times before? Like, what if the next time it happened, either made yourself deal with it then and there, or you, you know, made a plan to deal with it later. Um, and there's so many different ways that could look, but like, you know, one of the ways that you can deal with it then and there is setting a boundary then and there, or like writing out something that you can then be sharing with people in the future. Um, like maybe the thing that you're doing is changing your own routines and patterns so that these things can happen to you. Oh my gosh, I'm going on a little I don't even know where I'm going with this like dating example, but if you struggle with creating plans because you're impulsive, maybe try impulsively creating plans <laughs> or impulsively creating systems. It's been really fun. Okay, a little break from me. Blue-ing. And we'll actually talk about kink when I come back. Yay, because this is a kink podcast after all. We're going to talk about uh, dating apps and how to share whether or not you're kinky and whether or not you should. This is something I see all the time and I just want to talk about it.
because this is my podcast and I get to talk about it. Okay, see you then. Just a little break to share that if you are loving this podcast and my content, um, if I'm someone you could see yourself working with, but you're wanting more direct support for your specific situation, I do offer mentorship. Um, It's personalized to you, private um, video or phone calls with me so you can chat about your situation um, and figure out a solution that's going to work for you. You can visit my website. It is kinkybestie.com slash mentorships to see what's available and to book in your spot on my calendar. Uh, It's kinky with a Y at the end and bestie with an IE at the end. Um, The link will be in the show notes so you can check it out there. Back to the show. Okay. Right off the gate, I fully endorse using whatever dating apps make sense for you and your your area whether or not they're explicitly kink dating apps even if you're looking for kinky things i found my dom on a vanilla dating app i found plenty of other doms in vanilla dating apps and vanilla contacts contacts as well like anything in life you kind of get what you put out there you know um so with that being said there's this recurring topic of like, okay, if I'm on a vanilla dating app and I'm looking for kinky people, how should you hint that in your profile? Or how should you approach that with people? Or should you approach it at all? Whatever. And I was, I read a, a Reddit thread on this this week and some of the points in there were pretty good. It got me thinking. Um, everyone kind of has their funny little like ways to put it. I remember whenever I was on, you know, vanilla dating apps, um, I tried different things. I tried being like really upfront about it and I've tried being like upfront about it in a discreet way where I would like litter my profile with all these like kink, I don't know if acronyms is the word, but you know, I would put like, oh, like DDLG, BDSM, whatever in my profile So it almost felt like code because, you know, certain things you only know what it means if you participate in it, you know, Um, but I was kind of like, I don't know, that wasn't my preferred way of doing things, I found. Um, I think my favorite is one that actually I I stole from a friend who shared it with me who said that she puts um, just not vanilla her dating profile like it's that simple just oh not vanilla (laughs) most people know what vanilla vanilla means these days um and it's just such a you know not too out there not too too transparent way to just lay some some groundwork of like what to expect or what not to um on this reddit thread i was seeing a lot of people share that they put uh like again I don't know if acronyms is the word but like let's just say acronyms for like different uh consent systems I don't know if that's the word either but like okay so rack is the example that comes to mind it's like okay risk aware consensual kink I think oh my god is that wrong I don't know but it's such a bizarre acronym that like sometimes even people in the community that like you know do practice informed consent um maybe don't know exactly what that like that uh way of wording it means you know um so that's kind of like super ultra niche um and you know we're all going to meet people in different contexts so try, try the thing you're curious about. If it's standing out to you for some reason, you know, that's probably where, where you are in this point in your, your dating and your life journey. So try it out and see how, how it feels for you. Um, the biggest thing I always come back to with dating apps is just like, as long as you're not using your profile as a way to like put down people or like, if you're using it for some bizarre, like, 
with some bizarre filtering method. Like, it's it's so popular. Like, I have seen profiles all the time. And I used to do this, too. Where I'd put, like, okay, I'm not interested in, you know, don't even message me if you have a, a fishing photo on your profile. And, like, sometimes it's, like, kind of a joke. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's a joke and it's not a joke. <laughs> um, because maybe it's just a funny way of filtering someone out, but you're still trying to filter someone out by saying something like that. And what what tends to happen is, okay, you might filter those people, people out, I guess, that you're not wanting, but like, also you're just kind of putting it out there, what you're not interested in in this life and inviting conversations about that. Um, and also just, you know, it's hard to be, you're, well, you're not being flexible and open when you're spelling out what you're, you're not okay with. Um, and maybe I'm too tired to dive more into that, but I don't mean, you know, because people aren't putting in their profiles like, oh, I'm not interested in being abused or, you know, like illegal, manipulative, like poor, oh my God, I'm really tired. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I also cut myself self off at a weird point. I didn't mean to say like poor, like financially, um, but like, oh, maybe some people do put that in their profile too. Like, oh, I'm not interested in people making under a certain income, whatever, but like, what is the point? You don't know what your soulmate is going to look like. Um, so yeah, I just highly recommend instead focusing on the positives and what you do want and just seeing what comes out of that. Um, so that's kind of my, my take on it and what I've done in the past. Um, I also think, you know, it's cool to not have kink listed out in your profile or or making kink almost your whole pri profile, or kind of like every which way between those two ends of the spectrum. Like it really depends on, yeah, your area, you and like the intensity of a relationship you're looking for. Um, and the, of course the people who are gonna be finding your profile and who you're wanting swiping it. So just keep that in mind, like what you're actually trying to get out of the thing, uh, and then maybe write it back a little bit, uh, be a little bit more open to it, looking maybe a different, slightly different way than you envision off the top of your head, and letting in the lovely things, whatever they happen for you. Okay, I don't know why I thought it'd be a great idea to record this right before bed. Um, oh my god, it's even past my bedtime. Yeah, it's 12.12 12 right now for me. And I have taken a melatonin, but I was trying to roll with the impulsivity thing a bit because I was feeling psyched about that one topic, and so then I kind of made myself talk out another topic <laughs> just to finish the episode and do it. But uh, lesson learned... Midnight with uh, melatonin in my system is not the podcasting time. And you know what? I'm just going to keep learning. That's okay. All right. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me this episode. You can follow the podcast on the platform where you're listening to get updates with new episodes. You can follow me on social media at Kinky Bestie. I'm on Instagram. Um, you can also check the show notes for any links or resources that I talked about in this episode or just more ways to connect with me. And please share this with your kinky friends who could benefit from this type of content. Um, there is also an option for each podcast episode to engage with uh, Q&As, or polls. So I'd love to hear from you and create future episodes around what you want to chime in with. So please check those out in the show notes too. And I look forward to hearing from you. Bye.